I've set this up now just to explain a few things that we need to clarify in terms of detailing. So how do we start making this junction work? So I've got the floor tile on a bit of a fall. I've put some um, more to bed underneath that, but it's not quite sitting consistently. Uh, and I've got the wall tile. I've, I've now made this a stone tile and made it 12 mil thick. And I've put thick bed adhesive behind that, um, which is basically some rubberized compound in it rather than just mortar. Now what do we need to do? This corner is not quite right. We've talked about that in the last video. We need to understand that it, it can't be a square corner. Why is that? Effectively, if anything's going to move, if anything's going to fail, the corners are going to be where something fails. And that corner is all dependent on this waterproofing being attached to this wall cladding and being attached to this floor cladding. So that's where things are going to fail. So how do we reduce the likelihood of that failing? We reduce the priority on the corner. So what we do is we therefore reduce... Let's move this away. We'll just keep a copy of this. We'll move it away for now. We move away from the corner. We cut away from the corner. We don't waterproof the corner. Instead, what we do is we create an angle or we create a curve. We have less dependency on the perfect non-movement of that corner. One of the ways of doing that is to use a backing rod. So let's make this 10 mils. And we will put, I'll use a 50% grey in there. And then we might use a piece of polyline. I'll use a solid line and again make that quite thick to represent masking tape. So the masking tape will be sitting on and it's more likely I'd use something like gaff tape than masking tape but that's the, that's the terminology that James Hart has used, masking tape. And then we will put our waterproofing over that, in front of that. Let's try to just make that a little bit clearer. So then I'll get my waterproof, move, rotate. Let's just make that run into the floor. And I'll rotate that to 45 degrees, just because I want it to look a little bit nicer. And then just like before, I'll mitre those joints. Now, of course, the reality is it's never going to be this perfect, uh, but we like our drawings to look pretty. Right, so you can see underneath what we're tracing. It's not a straight line at all, uh, but that's what we're trying to explain is what's happening. So we're creating less of a dependency on that corner. We're adding a lot of extra waterproofing uh, in order to make that work well. And then what's important is that our tile obviously isn't competing for that corner. So we need to give ourselves extra depth at that corner so that works. Of course this doesn't necessarily need to be this tall. We could shrink this down more like this. Of course, then that just means we have to rework that corner. I've done this in different ways before. I've done this by creating uh, a polyline rather than single lines, but I found that creating the polyline sometimes just creates more work. Sometimes the single lines make that easier. The other way I could have done that would have been to use the stretch tool, and the stretch tool would work really well to be able to adjust that and make that work well. All right, so now let's just go to a bit more theory. How deep should this tile be? That's sort of a question of, well, how far does it need to run? So if this bathroom, this shower, let's say, was 900 millimeters wide, and let's just say that we had a, a linear drain or something at this point here, some type of a drain, and so if we were to continue all of these through, edit reshape stretch, Let's just run it all the way through for now. 
and we were to run this tile the whole way through, again we wouldn't because we only want it to be a 300mm tile, how far can that go before we need to stop it? Is it a, a drain that is cut into the floor? Or is it a drain that sits on top of the floor? Typically, if we're using a linear drain, then that's not going to be cut into our timber frame floor. It's actually going to sit on top of it, which means we need probably at least 20 millimeters of structure for our tile to line up with. So let's just use this as a, as a guide for now. So this is determining how thick our build up or our slope needs to be. So our bedding for our tile. So when the tiler comes and creates a screed, which is creating the fall on the floor, and then they come back and then they glue the tiles down effectively. How thick does that screed need to be? Of course, the screed is creating a fall, and we talked about that we're trying to create a 1 in 50 fall. That's the ratio that we're working to. But it's sort of based on the lowest point. It's based on the lowest point in the room. And now if that's only falling 900 millimeters, and that's telling us how tall that needs to be, but if it's falling a lot further than that, if it's falling 2 meters, then that's going to be substantially higher. So we need to understand, now in terms of a drawing that's a detail, maybe we don't need to work that out, maybe it just needs to be indicative, but it's very good to understand the impact that that plays. Next question, how do we do the corner for tiles? How does that work? Which one goes in first? I would suggest that we're probably creating our screed first, our floor screed. And then we have perhaps our wall tile going on first, and then our floor tile meeting it. We could do it like that. Or we could have a situation where our floor tile goes on first, and our wall tile meeting it. What's the problem with this? Of course, we're not meeting them perfectly. We need to allow a tolerance we need to allow a mortar gap. How does this mortar gap work? It's not probably going to work very well if this is a very, very heavy tile. So therefore, sitting this directly on the screed is probably going to be more structurally stable and then running this tile into it. Can we do that? Can we run this tile into it? Let's have a look at our trace reference. No, we can't run it straight into it. Why is that? We need to have a gap. We need to be able to leave a gap. And that gap would commonly, where we have a gap here, or a gap here, have a grout joint in between it. What would a grout joint look like? Effectively, a grout joint would be another piece of mortar-looking stuff like that. What's the problem with that? It's a corner junction. So typically in a corner junction, we actually shouldn't have a, a grout joint, but we should have a silicon joint. Something that is again going to have the ability to move, to expand, to contract. Something that if there is any movement between the wall and the floor, it's not going to create a break in the waterproofing. So of course that could work in that direction. That would mean that the tile is sitting directly on the screed. Or it could work in this direction, and we'd need to put a spacer underneath our tile so it wasn't sitting directly on this tile, and then we'd backfill that. With a silicon joint. So hopefully that's helped to understand a little bit about the construction and why we will be creating this junction the way that we are. That's effectively what we're trying to communicate. Now we haven't added the annotations that are here, and it's probably a very good idea to add in this annotation. Um, we're probably using this one at the moment. But of course, as I've been noting, there is some things that we will be changing. Now we only maybe legally need to have 150 millimeters of waterproofing above the 
water level. That's based on us not having a hob, uh, but us having a linear drain, 150 above here. Uh, but not if this is the back of a shower. So if this is the back of a shower, then that's going to need to be much, much higher. So at the moment, I'm not concerned about that. I'm just going to show this running continuously up. And then in terms of finishing a detail, what I like to do is finish with maybe not a break line, maybe actually more like just a white line. So use a fill, get rid of the edge, and display order bring to front. So that terminates without a line, which suggests there's a continuation. Of course, we could do that with a, a break line, which would look something more like this. So a break line is the professional way of doing that. But I actually, um, in terms of a presentation, like more of that just white junction.